So in this week's episode of Chainsaw Man, we learn what the price of admission is to the future devil's wild ride. For a devil that makes you actually put up an arm and a leg as payment, quite literally, or half a lifespan as we were confirmed in the prior episode with, the fact was that Aki's payment, I was expecting something a little extreme. Turns out, Aki's apparent end to his life is going to be probably so horrible, so wild, such a roller coaster of depression and excitement mixed into one that the future devil says, Hey bro, this one's on me. Just let me hang with you in your eye there so I get to witness this front row and in return you can see a few seconds into the future. Which honestly is a pretty fantastic ability. I used to always be one of those kids who would think about different abilities warriors could have on the battlefield. And I always thought to myself, just being able to see a few seconds into the future, if you only have swords or guns or whatever, is literally the difference between life and death. And the fact that we get a taste of what that can do as he's dodging so many arms left and right. Granted, the episode does end with him almost getting strangled to death or maybe getting strangled to death. But one does have to suspect that that's not the big moment that this devil is waiting for. This is just probably an appetizer for the excitement that's to come. The pain that's going to be coming for Aki. And holy hell, was this an episode of Chainsaw Man. Now, I do have a full live reaction available on the Patreon, so consider supporting that if you want to see that. But let's talk about episode 11 of Chainsaw Man. Because this episode was a wild, wild ride. And I think the first thing I need to talk about is Makima. This is the most psycho character... I think I've seen an anime. The cool, calm, and collected attitude, the perfect VA casting who just is so bone-chillingly, just so normal, but just such a lack of emotion. The fact that you can go into a meeting, which I gotta get a little dirty here, and I know I'm probably the only one thinking this, but when I saw a certain scene, which you are now seeing, I kinda was like, damn, if that isn't a parody of the casting couch, I don't know what is. But it did not go according to their plans of what they thought was going to happen, because this woman brings a bag of eyeballs to a negotiation table and the fact that rather than it just being a scene where she kills a bunch of the people in the room and they're like oh shit she's super powerful and we can say you know yeah she's psycho with how she goes about mass murder but you know, these characters probably aren't the most noble of people instead what chainsaw man does is she brings eyes of parents siblings families arguably innocent people to a gunfight and says, hey, we can bring these eyeballs back to them. We got the right people. Just kind of go with the flow. Make sure you help me out and I'll help you out. She literally has no chill and she is so frightening. And the fact that there is seemingly anyway, at least based on what I'm seeing, there has only been one character that has yet to be manipulated by Makima. And that is Best Boy, who's in the process of training arguably two of the most stupid characters, but two of the most lovable characters all at the same time. Hell, he's even saying, damn it, I'm actually growing attached to these idiots. But the fact that any, it's, it's such a perfect scene because they're separated by such a long area of the table. They're not in a round table. They're not, they're not at equal points of the table. They're not sitting next to each other. They're drinking opposite sides and just the fact that the final scene with them in that moment was her giving a smile after he calls out the bullshit with her i mean there's something just the fact that he's the one character to seemingly not go along with her schemes and she is so good at manipulating the chessboard whether with her body whether with her soft spoken words she gets the manipulation done as seen by a bag of eyeballs or the numerous things that have happened with Aki, Denji, Power, all these characters, and then here's my boy sitting here drinking saying, you ain't gonna manipulate me. But I just love what they're doing with this character because literally someone who's saying, you know, this is all about protecting, this is all about being able to crush devils, but it's like, you have to be the most psycho character in this show that I'm still waiting for everyone to get stabbed in the back by, but only time will tell with where they go. They did reveal a lot of really cool powers from fiends to devils. You start off with this shark ability, which might be able to say, sometimes when you look at the visual element of a Chainsaw Man character, you might want to giggle like, oh, you know, if you saw that in real life, you might be a little worried because goddamn, that's a human body with a shark head. But sometimes you look at that shark boy, ignoring the chomping of the mass zombie horde, and you're like, yeah, it's kind of cute and funny. But then you see like how vicious those things can be as it swims through floors and walls. It's such a cool ability. You have someone who's just pure violence in like this ancient doctor's witch doctor's mask, which is pretty cool. 
you have an angel that is just decides to take a bite out of a zombie head like an apple and if you touch it you're gonna lose your life i just love the fact that you can just have such violent tendencies and just you can turn someone who looks like she's a puppet sewn together into this giant walking arachnid creature just such cool characters and the fact that you have to warn people about what you might find in there I thought it's pretty brilliant because when you hear the plan that the snake lady had up her sleeve about, hey, we have a mass army of zombies, I thought that's actually pretty clever. You're not going to expect that. And when you walk into a building, you're going to get swarmed one bite and you're a zombie yourself. And then to see just what they were doing and then Aki almost getting shot not once but five times. I mean, I just kept thinking to myself, damn boy, you need a gun yourself if this is the type of shit you're going to be dealing with. And to see how quickly things can change from bad to good to worse is just what I love about the tension in this show because here's the thing right you have Aki who now has the ability to see three six seconds into the future it's not going to be like an hour or anything but a handful of seconds enough to dodge a death blow and he's slicing and dicing he's making it look like it's paper mache or butter he's with a single sword is slicing through bone and flesh like it's nothing and how quickly it goes away and he starts getting strangled. Now, I don't know how he gets out of this one. I really, really don't. But I'm excited, if not terrified, to see where the future of this show is going to go because episode 12 is not going to be pulling punches. If anything, everyone's going to be flat as a pancake because we're going to be hit by so much adrenaline, chaos, gore, comedy, what the hell mixed into one, that is the Chainsaw Man experience. And we are now officially 11 episodes in, meaning we've seen 11 ending songs that are completely unique, completely distinct, and I thought the 3D effect that they did with how they animated everything, I mean a lot of the character models were actually 3D character models, they had this shattering glass effect, and for an episode that feels like everyone's lives are on the line and everything could break at a moment's notice, this kind of upbeat song that was just a jam, a groove, wasn't my favorite by any means, but still a great ending song nonetheless, mixed together with these visuals with everything shattering around. It's like the perfect representation of what this episode made me feel, and that's what I love is that rather than it just being 12 unique ending songs, that could be good as a standalone song, they actually placed them at the right episodes to make it feel like they were crafted for the narrative or the feeling that an episode was trying to deliver. And that's why we love what they've been delivering with these EDs. Chainsaw Man is absolutely one of the best shows of this year and honestly is not going to be forgotten as we wait for season two whenever we do get it. But it just feels like a well-polished masterpiece of a gem. And the fact that you can make me love characters so much that when I hear they are most likely going to suffer a horrifying death that is apparently cool to this devil, but we the viewer and Aki himself knows is going to be horrifying for him. We know he's dying anyway, he only had a couple of years left, but it's hard not to kind of feel excited but worried all at the same time to see what the hell he meant, as Aki, since the death of his partner, has completely changed. It's very subtle but noticeable if you pay attention. The attitude, the way he performs his lines, his actor that is, it just feels like a more collected and reserved Aki who has nothing to lose. And that's why I love the scene in the car with him and the two others where they're basically saying, you're not a manga protagonist, like this is reality for them. You kind of piss me off because you think you're so hotshot, but you literally have nothing to show for it. Aki's like, you're absolutely right, but this is all I got. And the fact that there's still like, I'm still rooting for you, just you're not a manga protagonist. I just love what they're doing with the dialogue and the action, everything else in between. But thoughts and feelings yourself down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Like I mentioned, full live reaction is available on the Patreon if you're interested. And while you're there, why don't you get yourself a video shout out like a few are about to get here. So we got Speeder 2020, Sacha, and Eugene Lauren. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.